This is the world's leading telescope. The Keck Observatory in Hawaii. But it wouldn't exist without a series of engineering connections. The incredible ideas and inventions hidden deep within its design. A legendary ancient death ray. There, there we go. go. There it's burning. An industrial sandblaster. A strange musical instrument. A Cold War spy plane. And the secret of the refrigerator. Oh, burst it! How do you put these together to see further into space than anyone has ever managed before? I'm on a journey to reveal the engineering triumphs embedded in the Keck Space Observatory in Hawaii. This is tropical Hawaii. It's cold because this particular point is almost 14,000 feet above sea level. More important than the temperature, that means the air is thin. And that is why those are here. A dozen observatories perch on the summit of Mauna Kea. It's a dormant volcano. And it better be, because $600 million have been spent building the observatories up here. I don't know. Maybe it's my overactive imagination, but sometimes it's as strange and alien up here as the places these telescopes were designed to study. At this altitude, it's hard to breathe. But Mauna Kea's thin air and isolated position reduce atmospheric distortion, making it perfect for astronomy. It's why there are so many different observatories on the summit. Among them, the world's most important, the Keck telescopes. Telescopes magnify images, which are made of light. At the heart of every telescope is one of these. Well, not actually one of these, obviously, but a device for focusing light. The common or garden solution is to use a glass lens, which focuses a faraway image, as in the Yerkes Observatory in Wisconsin. In 1896, scientists construct the world's largest glass lens for Yerkes. It's just over three feet wide. But making glass lenses is notoriously difficult. It takes 19 attempts over three years just to produce the glass for a lens similar in size to Yerkes. And that's before grinding and polishing. A hundred years later, Kex designers need a lens 100 times bigger than Yerkes to see the deepest recesses of space. They need a lens 33 feet wide. But astronomers abandon large glass lenses as the way forward. Keck's engineers need a different way of collecting a huge quantity of light. Their method for creating a revolutionary new lens takes them on a journey back over 2,000 years to one of the world's first scientists. Archimedes and his legendary ancient death ray. Down at sea level, Keck engineer Craig Nance reveals more about this ancient device. Well, you can take a large mirror that has a concave shape to it, and the sunlight falls on the mirror and comes to a focus, and it's a very intense, bright spot. Perhaps you've heard of the legend of Archimedes? Wasn't he the guy who shouted Eureka when he got in the bath? Yes, that's right. We've all done it. That's right. Well, he also used these large reflecting mirrors, the legend says, to uh, set fire to a Roman fleet that was attacking his city. What, he set fire to them with a, a big... <laughs> that's right, that's what the legend says. So, would you like to try it? Yes. Well, let's come on, let's go. All right. To test the story of Archimedes' death ray, we're going to need three things. Sunshine and two items from Craig's little convoy. 
Should I ask what this is? It's not a Roman galley, but it's made of wood, so the principle will be the same. Very nice. Next up, the death ray itself. Wow! That looks suspiciously like a mirror. It's shaped just like okay. a satellite dish. Probably because it is a satellite dish, curved to focus the signal to a point. In this case, the sun's rays. We're testing this on an old airstrip under the watchful gaze of the local volunteer firefighters. Let's set this up on the horses. Just Smart. put a nice X there. Hey, look, that's the target. And we're going to aim right for the middle of that. OK. And it's going to take you and I both to hold this mirror. Local engineer Weldon Sheldon is our modern-day Archimedes. Very optimistic. Okay, we want to bring this in. So this... we can see how it's, it's bringing the light in. It's focusing it up. Yeah. On this... the mark. Even with Hawaii's hot sunshine, I'm not sure this is going to work. You see, I, I'm starting to see a little dark spot on I, there. I was wondering if that was just my eyes. No, that's not your eyes. It's actually, uh, get a the know smoke. It is catching. That's just because we're focusing all of the light that's hitting your satellite dish covered in aluminum foil. I saw flames for a moment there. Flames. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. There, there we go. go. Come on. There it's burning. Look at the fire guys. They get all twitchy. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This is science going on. Don't interrupt it. <laughs> Let's just remind ourselves, what we're talking about here is focusing light. We're concentrating all of the light that's hitting this big dish onto that one little spot there, and all that light in one place means a lot of energy. That's right, it does. Guys, oh, nice. there's a fire. And we've made a... Yeah, sorry. Archimedes' death ray proves that a curved mirror can concentrate and focus light in the exact same way as a glass lens. For astronomers, it's a revolutionary idea. In 1668, Isaac Newton builds a new kind of telescope. It still has an eyepiece, but instead of a glass lens, a curved mirror one and a half inches wide focuses the light. Fast forward 325 years to the Keck Observatory and to a mirror that focuses 70,000 times more light. This is it. 33 feet wide. It does the exact same job as a glass lens, but a lot more cheaply. At just $36 million, it's a steal. In fact, Keck has a series of mirrors to focus light. The huge primary mirror collects the beams, bounces them to a smaller second one, and then to a third, which reflects them to a camera, which replaces the old-fashioned eyepiece and records images of the cosmos in unprecedented detail. The mirrors are all housed in a support eight stories high, weighing 300 tons. And yet the device can operate with nanometer precision. And the Keck Observatory has two of these intricate arrays that work together. As astronomer Sri Kulkarni explains. The bigger the mirror, the better. Now think of these two telescopes as two ends of a mirror. Even though there's a 250-foot gap between Keck 1 and Keck 2, they work just like one big telescope with a huge mirror 275 feet wide. The quality of image we get is eight times better than what we can do with a single telescope. But designing the world's biggest telescope mirrors is one thing. Building them is another. Nobody has ever constructed a mirror this big before. So just how do Kex engineers do it? And shape it into the exact right curve? And how does a weird-sounding musical instrument provide the answer? 